Bang! Knees and Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife, Kara, is busy. And today we are checking out the Hinder XM24. And I'm going to talk about what I love and hate about this knife as we get into the good and the bad. Thanks to the Shadow Man for supporting us so much and sending us such amazing knives. We appreciate him very much. Let's get into this knife. So this knife is a, it's a big knife, you know, especially for a folder. I like big knives. I like all knives, though. I like big and small knives. But a lot of people know that I do like big knives. And this knife is about nine and a quarter with a four inch blade. Let's look at it next to the Benchmade Griptilian, which is about eight inches. And then let's look at it next to, here's the Spyderco Manix XL, the Manix 2 XL, which is right there with the Hinder. Both pretty big knives. All right, let's look at it next to the Quest Custom Gent, which you can see it dwarfs the Custom Gent. And this is a pretty decent sized knife itself. Um, and then here is the Recenti snafu by custom knife factory it's right there with it great size comparison and then here is the strider smf another one that's right there with it too great size comparison here is the little three inch <laughs> so <clears throat> big difference here and what i mean by three inches it has a three inch blade and then this one has the four inch blade and you can see the big difference because it's not just about the length the you know the the handle has to support the length of the blade and then the thickness the height everything changed so a lot bigger of a knife here is the spider called gail bradley that i modified and you can see the hinder is longer than the, the spider coat so so this one's an m390 all usa made um it is definitely in i guess what most people call an overbuilt knife titanium frame lock with g10 on the other side let's start with the blade and we'll work our way down as i go over the things i love about this knife and then i'll get to the things i do not like as much so i love the stone washing on the blade this is probably one of my favorite kinds of finishes. My second is probably uh, grind lines. I love the you know the look of good grind lines, kind of like um, like this, you know, where you can see the belt finish. I like that, and then I love a good stone washing. It really hides the wear and the scratches and stuff. So I definitely appreciate that. I love a good drop point blade. It does have. A beautiful sharpening choil slash finger choil that works fantastic. Um, it's big enough to get, you know, the whole meat of your finger in, which is awesome. I love a drop point blade because you can use the tip, the belly for slicing, and get good push cuts. I like being able to be very versatile with my blades. So it is, uh, like I said, a titanium frame lock. And you can see all the hardware is nice and overbuilt. Nice, well, I'm not overbuilt, but it's nice big hardware. I love big hardware. Nice big standoffs. And then the thumb studs are the stop pin in the open position. And then the stop pin in the closed position is this pin right there. You see where it locks up. So... I, I like this, uh, the lock bar stabilizer. So what this does right here, this piece of copper right there, stops it from over traveling and stops, you know, basically the lock bar from bending in any direction and, you know, not uh, lasting as long as it will with it there. You know, it stops you from over pushing it, you know, in different directions and, or the directions it's not supposed to go, I should say. And then it also has a lock bar insert, which is awesome. This thing is locked up like fort knox let's just say that but i love how thick this is like t when you disengage it gives you a nice little chamfer right here there are a lot of things thought out on this piece that i do really enjoy so it gives you a nice spot to disengage 
which is really nice because this is so thick. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, this is only as strong as this part right here. Trust me, this little, this thin piece of titanium is incredibly strong. I mean, this titanium is incredibly strong. I mean, just think about even steel being, you know, that thick. Like, that's, that's, yeah, it's plenty strong. But yeah, the build quality, everything is just done very well. Even like right here for your finger, super smooth. I can easily rub it right there. It's very nice. My finger locks in real nice right there. Even when I stretch my hand out right there. And then you can see the lanyard hole right there. One thing that did kind of weird me out though is look at the, it looks like there's a piece of copper right there, doesn't there? That kind of confused me because I don't know what that is. I didn't take it apart or anything. I know it has this copper piece, but why does that look like it's copper in there? I don't know. Anyways, no big deal. This one does have the triway pivot. So you have, right now it has the bearings, but it um, also comes with the the phosphor bronze or teflon whichever kind of pivot system you want you can have with this knife i did flip the clip around it did come with the clip facing um with tip down i flipped it to tip up um one it works better but two it carries better because uh it just does <laughs> but the 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 knife is against the seam of my pants so it can't open up in my pocket or anything like that not like this thing would but you know it's just better that way and it's more comfortable in the hand g10 is nice and grippy i like the pattern on it but yeah it feels solid in your hand in either hand too um yeah nice g10 i really like this g10 and then they have all different colors you can get for, you know, hinders, they even have aftermarket parts, you know, my car, the titanium, so on and so forth. For these knives, these knives are very customizable. So basically like one of the best knives to customize, there's so many companies that sell aftermarket parts for it. So you can basically make any one of these, make it your own. I guess that's the way you'd want to look at it. You can basically make it your own, however you want it. You can, uh, you can buy one and then just build it as you please. The parts aren't cheap, but you can do it. So let's talk about the grip. The grip is fantastic um, in a lot of ways. You know, there are a couple spots, but um, we'll get into that in a second. But yeah, the grip is really good. Plus, you have a lot to grip onto. So, you know, with push cuts and stuff, you really get a good grip in all grips and then right here locked in you're really locked in right there now i did not sharpen this thing but i did hone it i did hone it and i did strap it now i might be sharpening it after this video i'm not sure um yeah i i i'll go I'll go on anyways <clears throat> So it carries just fine in the pocket i didn't have a problem carrying it you know it does have a good weight on it and a good balance point first of all it's like it's really really balanced it makes me feel like i can just flip this thing all over and like never really lose it because i constantly know like it just it, one it, the the grip on it's so good but then the balance point is just really nice too um yeah very nice in the hand in a lot of ways now i thought that this might be an issue right here because it's so thin right there watching it in other videos like i was like man is that thing gonna be sharp on my hand but no it's not right there um on this side it tends to be but not not too bad it's actually pretty good now there are so many things i like about this knife and i'll continue talking about those I, but i really need to uh, address the things that i dislike first and then i'll go back into the things i really enjoy about it so first off this damn flipper tab, it's so sharp right here. And I know people say this, so this is a common one. I got more things, but this detent is, look how strong this is. And I want you to see that I'm not holding the lock bar. This thing, I can't even, I can, I finally got it with this hand. Ah, 
I can't do that more than once. I can do it once per hand and then my thumb is done. I could do it with my left hand a little bit easier for the thumb stud. That detent is very strong. You can hear it. I'm gonna do one flip. I'm not gonna hold the lock bar at all. Watch us. Now it's already got a mark. And now to me, I can see that a lot better than you probably can on camera. Now after just a couple flips of me flipping this thing, I mean, let me, look at that. I mean, it gets ridiculous. And that's just, you know, over, the, that was from one flip, that one right there. Now if I keep repeating in the same spot, yeah, no good. Then if you hold it up here and you do the light switch, you slide down these and that's even worse. Look at my finger now. You can see the two lines that's from going down right there. You can see that. But I just don't understand. Why not round that off? Why leave it that sharp? Like really think about that. Why leave that like that? Why not... Why leave this that sharp? Why not just knock it down, chamfer it down, round it? Like they could have went in a complete circle right here and just kept that corner out. And it would still be great action. I mean, I don't I don't get it. Or I don't know, build this up higher and I don't know. Something something more comfortable. I know that's a big complaint, so it's not I'm not the only one. But it's also coupled with this strong detent. This is a very heavy blade to pop out. So it needs a strong detent. And I understand that. I almost have to like manipulate it in a way in my hand to where I'm flipping it when I want to complete, when I want to keep flipping it, you know, and I'm not just flipping it once, but I'm flipping it a whole bunch of times. I got to almost, almost manipulate my hand in a way to where I can comfortably do it a bunch of times. But, you know, I know it's not a fidget knife or anything like that. Um, so you kind of want to claw it in, like, I don't know. There's a couple different ways I kind of do it to make it more comfortable. But, yeah, the thumb studs on this thing, it's just too much. I can't even slow roll it out, like, without even holding I just can't do it. And I have, you guys know, man, I got some callous beat-up hands. So, the... <laughs> This is a bit crazy. Now, maybe it'll break in more and more as time goes on and it'll get easier, but I can't middle finger flick it. And I, I can thumb flick it, but it's hard and it hurts. So that sucks. Um, now, the next thing <clears throat> is I did get some, you know, like right here, I, even though the ergos are really good, when I was really squeezing it and I'm really bearing down pushing, you know, I could feel like all in here a lot, but... Not that big of a deal, but it is a thing. Now, another thing that really bothers me, and it's, I don't know if it really bothers me, but it kind of does. Okay, so look at this spot right there, right? You see that? It's right under the edge, that little dot. That's where it locks up in the closed position. Now, what I don't like about that is that that's the finger choil, and you're going to sharpen it back. Now, let's say I use this thing every day. This is my go-to. This is what I use, and I abuse it. I'm going to need to sharpen and sharpen and sharpen. I'm going to have to be careful because what's that? I don't know, five, six sharpenings or so, maybe more. I don't know how many sharpenings it is, but however many sharpenings that's going to be, I got to start being careful because if I go past there, it's not going to lock up in the closed position. It'll over travel and then it could smack these backspacers. So I got to make sure I sharpen up this way. I got to make sure I leave this alone right there and that <clears throat> I make sure all my sharpening goes up this way and I leave this portion alone. So like, let's say I sharpened it back to here and I know that's a lot of steel. By then you'd probably just get a new knife, but that means this will be left there right <laughs> it'll be i'll probably have to, like put a choil in and then just start sharpening i don't know anyways it's just something that i thought about i know that's a lot of sharpenings but it's not i just wish they would have moved it why didn't they put it down here right why not just put it right there what, what would they have done they could have just moved it up that's it well i don't i don't get that that, that makes zero sense to me that pin up done Anyways, enough about that. <laughs> 
So next thing, cutting with this thing. Okay, so I did use it. I did cut with it. Like I said, I didn't sharpen it. I did hone it, but I want to sharpen it bad. The thing is though, is that it really doesn't have enough damage that it requires an edge. So I'd hate to remove steel that doesn't need to because it's still okay. Is it good? No, but it's okay. Now in my, I hope I didn't just break that. In my humble opinion, I would have sharpened it already. Let's see if it'll even cut paper or not. Yeah, see, it'll still cut paper, but to me, it needs a new edge. It does. And I'll tell you why. It, one, it's a factory edge. So I, I measured the angle of which this was sharpened at. 25 degrees on one side and 22 on another side. So one side was 25. Even though they look pretty even. Um, which I guess you can kind of see it. So one side's 25, one side's 22 degrees. So now the thing is the benefits of cutting with a big knife or that you or is that you have so much distance. So like say if I'm cutting repeated cutting cardboard, right? And I'm just cutting cardboard. I can wham, 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 and just keep hitting it. And I don't have to think about my blade sliding out or anything like that. But with this, I've been, there was times where it cut pretty decent, you know, uh, against the thin cardboard, but <clears throat> there were other times where it wasn't so much that the knife wasn't cutting. It was that my hand hanging on to the object that I'm cutting. It's like it wanted to just pull it out of my hand because it took so much power to push through that this hand couldn't hang on to the cardboard. And what I'm saying is this. heard that that didn't sound very clean did it so like when i'm hanging on to this and i'm cutting right here like to hang on to it while i'm pushing through like this isn't so bad this very dry not so thick cardboard but when you're doing it a lot and you're doing stuff with tape on it and maybe thicker stuff maybe not so dry as whatever the case is hanging on to it and pushing through at the same time like it, it really wants to pull it out of your hand. Like it's like really pushing. Now there were other times where it just dragged right through without an issue. But then there were other times like halfway through my cutting when I was really testing it, it started kind of driving me nuts. So then I grabbed another knife and I cut with it. And it was like night and day. Like I literally saved this hand, not the cutting hand, but the hand that was holding on to the stuff, a lot of work. Like, like it was, it was starting to get a little ridiculous in my opinion for cutting. Now, I think that that could be fixed in a way. If this edge was laid back about 17 degrees, I think this thing would be a, an awesome cutter to an extent. I mean, as much as it can be, because now the next thing, this thing is very thick, right? Which it's supposed to be. I'm not complaining that it's too thick, but right here, you know, like here, let's look at this. Um, the grip tilling, it's known to be a thick knife, right? It's pretty thick, pretty hardy. Look at how much thicker that is. Now I know this is an XM24. I'm not talking crap that it's so thick. I'm just saying it's very thick. So for stuff to bend over this spot right here, because you see how it thins out right here. And that's basically so stuff can go around you know the blade so like as you're cutting and you start splitting it can go up and around the blade when it's going up it can go over the top of this part right here but getting over this hump you know it, it takes some work um <clears throat> which you know whatever it's just it is what it is now i think in a slicer grind or something this thing would cut so much better um or a thinner grind i'd love to see this with a hollow grind whoo this thing would be amazing with a hollow grind um also if i just laid back the edge and you know gave it a better edge one sharper two laid back uh the bevel would be bigger and yeah i think this thing would cut a lot better now was it that bad no it wasn't that bad this thing is a beast i do enjoy it i like it a lot there are a lot of things i love about this thing i mean i love how overbuilt it is i love that it, the type of knife it is but i got pry bars literal pry bars that aren't this thick 
and I've pried two by fours off of walls with them. And especially like mini pry bars, you know, like the ones that go like right inside your tool pouch. I mean, they're far thinner than this, but I have even big pry bars that aren't as thick as this. So, I mean, think about it. <clears throat> but yeah, the, I love the, the build quality on it. I think that the build quality is just amazing. I love the, um, you know, like I said, the hardware, the, the clip works great. I love the ergos. The ergos are fantastic. Um, there were times where I tried to push through like two pieces of cardboard at once in this grip and it did wind up going through. It bound up a lot, but this hand was having a hard time holding on to the stuff. Um, now this belly portion and the tip, you know, it's got a thick tip, a hardy tip. So, I mean, you know, it could definitely do light prying. I'm not telling you to pry with your knife, but this is definitely a knife that could handle it in my opinion. Um, it's a solid build and I like that about it. Now out in the woods or something, maybe it would just do a lot better. Um, than you know like than actually doing edc stuff and that's probably mostly what it's built for you know out in the field type work stuff like that but even like doing construction right like i've done construction my entire life and you know like say think about a utility blade right yeah you go through them they break you know they chip but you use them but that's what you use to cut stuff utility blades that are like this thin because you need thin things to, to, to slice through, say, a, a sheet of aluminum. Say if I have a sheet of aluminum, I have to cut it in half. So you, you score it, and then you bend it, right? And it pops in half. So I wouldn't want to use something like this to do that with, and I consider that pretty hard use. Now, like, even just things like that, if I have to notch wood or whatever, I use my pocket knife a lot in construction. But I don't necessarily need something that that is so thick that it won't work. Now... In return, like I said, this could be used a little bit as a pry bar, but <clears throat> for the cutting ability, I think it, it maybe shine maybe outdoors and stuff like that. But like I said, if the edge was laid back, I think I would have a little bit different perspective because like with the Jurassic, that's what happened. I sharpened that Jurassic up and night and day difference. The difference when I was cutting with it versus when I put an edge on it, whoo! It was so much different. So maybe I am thinking a little bit too hard about this because, like I said, the angle on this this edge is 25 degrees and 22 degrees. So um, the thickness behind the edge, you know, it's really not as bad as I thought. It's about 24 thousandths behind the edge. It's not as bad as I thought. Um, and then when you look right here, you can see it does get thick quick so it starts getting thick dramatically quick you do have a few sharpenings before it'll do that though so it could definitely use a new edge and after having a new edge i think it would um materials would spread a lot easier when pushing you know it through and yeah, it's a great knife, man. I really like it. Now, is it too big? I don't think so. I like big knives, like I said, but I also like using a big knife. Like, say if I had to go out and do my recycling, right? Like, I'll have a pile of cardboard, a big pile of cardboard, and I got to cut it all up. And I, at work, I have to cut up a lot of stuff like that. So when I think of, I always want to bring a big knife. I really do. I try to usually bring a big knife because I'm cutting pretty, you know, aggressively, I wouldn't pick this so and i would want a knife this size i would way rather pick oh yeah and that's another thing after using this this i used this manix to cut through stuff and like i said like it was just night and day now i know the thickness is way different like there's so many things that are different so it's i'm not comparing these two at all i'm just saying like that you want the knife you're going to grab, right, for those things. So what would I use this for if it was mine? It would definitely be a hard-use knife, something, like I said, in the field, possibly light prying, small cuts. I wouldn't do it for, like, long-term cutting. Um, now, if I just needed to cut something really quick, no problem. But I feel like something built this strong, like, wants to be used, right? And, you know... There's lots of things to cut, you know, rope and cardboard and wood and, 
excuse me, straps and plastic and plastic straps. And so, I mean, maybe to shine a little bit better, you know, after an edge. So, but I would want to use it on all of those things. And I just, man, I wish it was a hollow grind or I wish it was just a little bit better of a cutter. I'm not saying it's horrible. I, I hope you guys aren't taking me wrong. And I've been on this subject entirely way too long. It cuts good. Not great. So it cuts decent. Okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, I do like the knife though. It is a brute of a knife. It's pretty big. It's nice. It's heavy. Um, all the things you want in an overbuilt knife. I do like it a lot. I think I like the XM18 just a little bit better. Um, I don't know if it's, I don't think it's really the size cause I like the size, but I, th maybe it's a little bit to do with the size, but I like the XM18 just a little bit better. These go for about 600 bucks, about 595. It is definitely a price to pay, but they have lots of parts you can get for them. You can change them around a lot. You can add you know, like different colored screws, different kinds of screws. There's lots of modifications you can get on these. So, um, and it's all built in the USA. So lots of great things and it's built very strong. It's got a great warranty. So, um, yeah, not too bad of a price for what you're getting. All right, guys, there you guys go. Love you guys. Peace.